Hello and welcome to the Sunday Q&A session. This online meeting is for the seekers of path of knowledge and I try to answer your questions, clear your doubts. This satsang is very useful for newcomers who are trying to progress on the path of knowledge. I try to provide the needed guidance. This is being conducted on a telegram group. It is open public group. Anybody can join. All questions are most welcome. Those who are listening on YouTube, they can post their questions in the comments. Seeker is asking, can you explain the path of Baba and Karoli? Why do paths of some, some saints are not very obvious? Can you talk more about your observation of observations of Baba and Im Karoli? It is very obvious that it belongs to the path of devotion, Bhakti Marg. And the paths of saints are not obvious to probably those who have little knowledge of the spiritual path and tradition. Those who are experienced, those who are seeking since many years, those who already have a path and a guru, they will come to know immediately what is the path. And sometimes these great people will have more than one path, more than one tradition. That is because their domain of service is bigger than ordinary gurus who teach only one path, one tradition. Some gurus, they can teach any number of paths and traditions because they have realized the unity of everything already. So let me know if you have any other questions because I don't know anything more about uh, Neem Karoli Baba except these things which is I call these gurus public gurus as given in our traditional classification of gurus so they can speak about anything because their job is to interface with ordinary people public gurus and they are very famous and then they select some worthy seekers and they teach them their own path rest of them they get general guidance so if you belong to the category rest of them, then you will never understand what kind of path he is on. Seeker is asking, what is the significance of such a saint coming to thought spontaneously and continuously for several days? Then what should a sadhak do? So this is what we normally call as a sign. And the sign is very obvious. The seeker should start seeking systematically. And that is why there are thoughts or there are dreams or there is an attraction, the seeker w wants to listen to that person, read the books written by that person, takes interest, or wants to meet, go to that ashram. These kind of desires, if they are arising, they are very auspicious because this means that it is the right time to start seeking. It is the right time to find a guru and leave the unnecessary behind. Focus on only spiritual matters. Take up the spiritual goal. This is the meaning. This is the significance. Seeker is saying, I was, I never followed the path of devotion. It does not matter. The path is for starting. If you want to reach top of a mountain, you should take up a path. And many paths will take you to the top of mountain. Some are straight, some are spiral, some are difficult, some are easy, some are fast, some are slow. Depending on your capacity, you need to walk. This is for starting and as you reach the peak, you will see that all paths are now mixing together. Once you are on the peak, there is no meaning in having a path. There is no meaning. This is a tool for beginners. If even after 20, 30 years of progressing in spirituality, the person is still saying, I have this path. That means he has not reached the peak. He is still on the path. And if a person says that this is the real path, this is the right path, only this path will take me to the peak. That means he is not even on the path. He is at the bottom of the mountain right now because he cannot see anything else. So as you progress, the concept of traditions, paths, gurus, they will all disappear. That is a sign of progress that now you don't see any difference at all in the teachings or traditions. The system that we are following is pathless path. It means it is like you are airdropped on the top of the mountain directly. Don't need to take any path. No progress will happen here. This is the direct path. There is no path here. And so from this point of view, there is no difference in gurus and traditions and paths.
it is all one so my suggestion will be to everybody not only to seeker do the self assessment see where you are on the ladder do you see differences in saints do you see differences in teachings or do you only see differences in the style of teaching do you have doubts about what is true what is false then you are somewhere in the middle not on the peak so you can use our self evaluation tool to do that do it regularly and the more you find yourself on the higher end of that tool the more your progress is so a person on the peak has dropped all the paths we try to do it on the first day but obviously why are there different paths because people are not capable of staying on the peak so they slide down somewhere then they start again shraddha is saying when one starts to understand the reason behind the emotions i stop to enjoy them just like any other activity of the body any other activity of the mind because emotion is simply activity that appears in the body mind for a few seconds minutes everything like this which comes and goes becomes boring after a while but your question is somewhat different that i understood why it is there so i stopped to enjoy it yes that is possible because the reality of that emotion is seen earlier it was real like a movie if you are not told that the movie is uh, fake unreal that it was produced somehow by hook or crook these people are acting they nothing is happening on the screen then obviously the illusion of reality breaks down there you cannot enjoy it that much because you have seen how it was made if somebody tells you this movie is a documentary it really happened now there is more enjoyment there there is more involvement in that activity now because it is taken as real as soon as you are told no this is all fake and now it is boring now if it repeats if the fake thing repeat initially probably you will enjoy them because what a nice creation of artist but after that it becomes so boring because it's all fake same thing about emotions and all the thoughts sensations of the body and so on once it is seen how they are being produced okay this is the reason this thing is happening this is the reason these thoughts are coming then their juice is reduced they become dry this can explain many things like those who are very intele- intellectual they do not indulge too much in emotions because they know why they are there they know they are coming and going as a natural activity there is nothing special in the emotions and those who are spiritual they ignore the thoughts because they know why they are there why these thoughts are coming from which memory they are coming what is the intention behind the thought produ- producing that thought is it survival related is it pleasure and pain related is it related to this tendency that tendency you can all see it i am talking about people who are now advanced they have awareness of the body mind and the world they can easily see why, why these things are happening why these events or experiences are happening and the spiritual people they lose interest in thinking also in thoughts also because they have seen the fakeness of it so it is like a hierarchy the higher you are the less interest you will take in the lower activity so those who are on the level of the body they are very much affected by what is happening in the body how they look what clothes they wear what kind of makeup they do <laughs> what kind of brands they use because body centric what is happening in the body and the body is the most real thing for them so about that our uh, sensations feelings so they have left the body little bit not totally the body is not so important now they want the taste of food they want the sensual pleasures of all kind they want to stay away from pain so we call it the hedonistic tendencies actually it is all very much uh, systematically available in the self evaluation tool online on our website gyanmark.guru its technical names i'm skipping them today about that our emotions now the pleasures are also boring 
the pain is not so important but the emotions are most important because there lies the enjoyment of that person happiness sadness love hate they are engaged there it is so juicy as soon as you rise above that you see the fakeness of it they are boring now now thoughts intellectual exercises logic rationality science so on sometimes arts engineering invention discovery travel many people think that is the end but for a spiritual person that also becomes boring because the illusion of it is all seen how these activities are happening what tendencies are driving them it's all seen now it becomes fake low quality movie all acting so their activities drop at least the unnecessary things they completely stop there's no enjoyment in it. is this the end we don't know but uh, there is one thing where everything ends and that is you that is your real nature it is called the bliss it is the whole existence itself you are that but very few people know this so they never reach this place it is not possible to reach there without a path a spiritual path and without a guru only systematic study will take you above intellect buddhi to rise above buddhi is to become buddha so those who are there they never get bored of anything because that is the place of truth that is one thing that has no cause cannot be understood it is mysterious it is the only truth it is the only stable thing it is pure bliss it has no mechanisms to understand anything it is simply being what you are so that never becomes boring and the path of knowledge will take us directly to that place it is called self realization knowing your true nature and we recommend that you abide there you stay there you remain in awareness yes everything below that will become extremely boring we call this kind of person renunciate or he is left mostly in the ordinary activities of ordinary people and world although he is here although the body mind where will it, it will go the more, the world is the home of body mind it is not that it is discarded but it is detached there is a detachment with it so at least according to me and according to the greatest gurus and masters this is the highest place to be there is no chance of getting bored here shraddha is asking is there any difference between knowing self and realizing self it totally depends on how you define these words some people will define them differently some people will say no difference so in our system knowledge and realization are same knowledge means i know what it is realizing means i know what it is it is real now some systems will say that knowledge means you read it somewhere or somebody told you about who you are you heard it in some video or somewhere they are taking the meaning of knowledge as information and realizing now they become serious that yes yes it is real now realization it has become real for me so depending on the person who is saying it internally they can have different meanings in our system knowledge means realization there is no bookish knowledge here and there is no intellectual knowledge there is no uh, any other kind of knowledge the knowledge always means that the truth has been seen what is true what is not is seen that is the meaning of the word knowledge or the false is dropped all the beliefs are cleared that is the meaning of knowledge so when that happens the reality shines now when there is knowledge the reality shines it is you can say it. now i realize this thing it can be about anything not only about self in our system at least the uh, essence of knowledge program the word knowledge is a direct translation of sanskrit gyan there is no word for realization in sanskrit there is only one word and uh, whatever you people keep calling as information intellectual knowledge bookish knowledge and all for that there is only one word in sanskrit agyan not knowing so those who hear it about, about the self or any other topic or those who read about it somewhere we call they are ignorant they don't have the knowledge so my um, suggestion to everybody is to stick to one word knowledge and opposite of it ignorance knowledge is knowing exactly what it is through your own experience ignorance is just information or false beliefs or ignorance or you can say wrong notions 
so once this is crystal clear you can get knowledge if if the definition of knowledge is not known there is less chance of knowing anything oh gishraddha is saying if someone who has read many books and understands the mind progress in trying to apply these judgments on others to know their spiritual progress isn't it foolishness only guru can understand his disciple progress yes you are right by reading this book and that book and people start judging others it means they do not have their own goals they do not have their own target they do not want to work on themselves so self judgment self evaluation is the quality of a seeker and judgment of others evaluation of others is the quality of an ignorant person and even after reading the book they keep doing this but they have a backup of the book bookish knowledge behind them that this is written in this book so this person must be like this so uh, earlier they were they were stupid now they are completely mad so not only you cannot judge somebody's spiritual progress uh, you cannot judge even their day to day behavior this is the ordinary person and those who are not the seekers they cannot judge those who are seekers the seeker is much above far away from the scope of an ordinary person so whenever they judge it they are always wrong so even after reading the book nobody is able to judge anybody's spiritual progress but we don't tell them because they have this kind of freedom to judge anybody so we let them do it and we continue on our path we continue on our towards our goals spiritual goal now the controversial thing is guru can guru judge the progress of a seeker disciple mostly 90% of the time yes they can especially if the seeker belongs to their own path and he is the guru of that he knows the seeker student since many many days many years then then only then we can say as yes, the only guru can tell whether this disciple is progressing or not but if the disciple belongs to some other tradition some other path then probably the guru has no way to evaluate or probably he can do a rough evaluation and there are cases where the guru cannot judge their disciples sometimes and that is very rare it happens when the disciple is faking their progress whenever the student is in front of the guru he talks sweetly he talks great things about spirituality he shows his knowledge behaves nicely but inside there is something else so because the gurus are very busy people they have hundreds of students so they think yes he is progressing nicely we don't know what's going on behind his back there are people like this who fake spiritual progress not only among ordinary people worldly people they do it in front of the guru also probably to take some favors from the guru or probably their nature is like this because since childhood in our society we are taught to become a fake person to display that which we are not isn't it you are brainwashed into this kind of behavior that pretend that you are rich don't tell how much we earn pretend that you are smart pretend that you go to big school lie they take the same mentality to the ashram and they say oh i know all these things already i am a big seeker now look i am doing all these things which great seekers do i know all the sanskrit and i have i know everything which is written in the books so the guru says yes you have progressed enjoy your life because the guru is not really concerned about what people are displaying because that is not permanent eventually the fakeness will go away it falls down the false personality comes out one day and probably the guru is not even surprised <laughs> because there is a very simple rule in spirituality that those who are very much progressed those who have progressed beyond the ordinary they never display anything actually they look very ordinary and stupid they walk talk laugh like ordinary people you cannot even see where they are there is no fakeness in them sometimes they fake to be ordinary just to mix among the people because you know our society if somebody is different even slightly different than the normal then it becomes they make your life terrible there is a lot of discrimination in the society so sometimes to just blend into the society they remain ordinary it is impossible to tell where they are so the more you progress the more ordinary you become nothing special 
and if somebody is displaying their speciality especially in front of guru it is very easy to say that they are not progressing although this is not a rule it is not a rule there are all kinds of people so yes you can say 90% of the time the guru can understand where their students are sometimes it takes only one minute Shraddha is saying seekers daily life could be as simple as any other household women yes yes it should be simple just like i said the higher you are the simpler you become now what is the meaning of simple that is a little bit subjective some people the simple means one house one husband one wife one car one dog nowadays dog is necessary for simplicity isn't it standard and uh, like this you see okay okay this much is simple life for me when there can be some people who will say simple means you live in the jungle eat only roots and uh, you have only two clothes that is simple for me so yes seekers are simple but the simplicity depends on their choice they are free to choose but yes there is a line when you can say now it is not simple that some people even after becoming a seeker are living unnecessary complicated lives they have not dropped anything or moreover they have gained many many things so what is simplicity on the path of knowledge dropping of unnecessary what is necessary that must be decided by the seeker not by somebody else because the necessities which are unique to the individual you may need this thing but the other person may not need it for the other person it can be unnecessary so yes but there is a limit above which you can clearly see that uh, no progress has happened and uh, the simplicity is not seen in their behavior or speech or thoughts again there are no rules we cannot judge by looking at the person that he is not progressing because he is not simple there is no such rule but uh, it is generally seen like this that the more you progress the simpler you become because it's the same thing which i was talking about the fakeness and necessary is seen it is seen that all these things are unnecessary just to maintain a life sometimes we need to have all these things now if you have a house and you have a farm land etc etc then probably you won't need a job you don't need even a bank account you don't need anything you don't need relatives they have become unnecessary now but if you don't have all these things and you still want to continue the life then you will need job then you will need relatives you will need a household you will need a source of income and now this is necessary now nobody can say that you 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 are not simple enough so there the definitions keep changing but there is a limit where we can see that now excess is happening and there we can say that now this person is not progressing usually we try to minimize but if it becomes uncomfortable then we draw the line there and we cannot minimize beyond this right now this is very subjective shraddha singh seeker's ego wants some acknowledgement from his or guru so they try to show that through questions and sharing their experiencing experiences but it's always directed towards higher truth probably you are saying that no matter what seekers are no matter what seekers ego is doing the guru always directs them to the higher truth. probably you want to say that because i cannot see the question there yes so initially the seeker will not understand what to do their uh, worldly personality still continues in the spirituality so the ego is was dominant it is still dominant guru can say it that uh, the seeker is telling his or her achievements i know this i know that why don't we discuss this upanishad today in sanskrit <laughs> trying to show off so the guru plays the guru is uh, you can say so much experienced than the seeker that he has no objection okay we'll do this but in this process all he does is dismantles the illusions of the seeker so many people do that in one day and the result is that uh, that person leaves that guru if it is done suddenly if the guru shows that person that uh, you are just a beginner there is nothing special in your achievements then the, the student can think that this guru is <laughs> below my level some some students are like this 
so that is harmful for the student so the guru pretends yes yes it's very good you are great now we'll go higher than this i'll tell you bigger secrets and uh, tries to keep the student around so slowly the student realizes becomes softer so that the guru can shape the student because if you come like a hard rock then there will be blows of hammers and chisels on you which nobody likes but if you come like a soft clay clay pot can be made easy just push of a finger and the clay turns into clay pot or a statue beautiful piece of art so till the rock becomes clay the guru plays the game it is all a game for the guru but uh, it is not wrong you see whom are you going to tell your experiences whom are you going to ask your questions is there anybody else in the world nobody understands you so it is not wrong when it becomes problem is that the students remain remains stuck on their experiences and their knowledge whatever they call knowledge if they remain stuck there yes guru listen to me the guru was happy the guru did not uh, point out any mistakes in what i said that means i am already up there probably i should start teaching now others if if something like this happens then some action is taken usually the guru will wait till the student gets bored of their own echo chamber me 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 and uh, finally ask the right question that day we were talking about the right question the knowledge happens as soon as there is the right question and we are waiting for that moment that is the moment of grace the right question is not that i have re- read this book i listened to this guru and he said that and the book says this is this right did i understand it correctly now i know the truth what do you say is this the right question no the seeker is asking for confirmation of their beliefs he is already full now he is trying to get uh, acknowledgement from the guru so the guru, it depend totally depends on the guru some gurus are very very cruel they will simply shatter their delusions some are very kind hearted compassionate they will keep the delusion alive wait for the right moment it totally depends on the style of teaching and i can tell you on the path of knowledge it is like highest cruelty as soon as the person opens the mouth their ignorance is told we do not waste time here that's why nobody likes this path so much there are some extreme versions of path of knowledge like zen <laughs> where the teaching looks like an insult to the student but that is the fastest very fast so there is a rule now i made this rule that if the person does not want to learn anything I don't consider that person as a student. I consider that, per- that person as a simple our ordinary person whom we meet in everyday lives and I do not tell them much. As soon as there is a desire to learn then my hammer and chisel is ready. How much can you play, isn't it? If you have 20 or 30 students, you can play a little bit. Okay, come tomorrow we'll discuss this thing in detail tomorrow. i'll also learn some sanskrit from you like this we can play a little bit but if you have 2 300 students in and we start playing with everybody waiting for everybody to finally wake up from their delusions then it is a waste of time so nowadays i simply check do you want to learn or not do you want to learn path of knowledge yes okay it is like a bomb blast then no yes yes then they are on their own if they are ignorant happy in their ignorance if they are deluded enjoy so some people will say this is not kindness this is not compassion yes it is it is not kindness because the kindness is now towards the worthy person you see if the guru wastes a lot of time on unworthy person that means this is the loss for the worthy student you are being unkind to those who really want something from you those who really want your time and your attention and the guru is busy in unworthy people <laughs> from that angle it is a directed kindness that now the worthy people are getting the whole attention this will happen to everybody who has many many students they need to select now otherwise nobody benefits otherwise they become low guru <laughs> like we were talking about yes everybody is getting something everybody is getting some kind of answer but nobody is progressing so it is very good to become popular but that is that is not the mission of many gurus 
the real guru wants to create another guru the real guru will not create a crowd of students if you are a guru you have created one or two gurus you know that quality that level of person then your life is fulfilled you are you have lived a successful life as a guru nothing more needs to be done why can't we turn everybody into experts in advait <laughs> it's not possible so we should not have that kind of ambition only a few are worthy only a few are ready and if your total attention is on them success is guaranteed so it, it is not a simple matter sometimes totally depends on what was told what was the mission sometimes the mission is simply to spread the awareness among people there is something called spirituality and then right and wrong true and false realization non realization these things are not the concern the concern is to attract as many people as possible so path of knowledge i have seen is not about uh, public very few people reach here those who want to learn they get complete package like i said pathless path they are on the first day they are on top of the mountain some will slide back so then it cannot do anything they are sent to other gurus this is one thing i want to add that this can be a common question about uh, the gurus that how can i simply go and accept the guru without first finding out what they teach what is the path what is uh, the benefit for me there you know spiritual benefit is this guru right guru or not how can i simply go and say teach me i am your disciple and this is very good question because this is very practical so the answer is straight forward which we had discussed many times that you will never know the student cannot judge the guru by any means so this is the um, progress route for the students that they will take many gurus they will join many many ashrams they will taste many many paths and finally they get a little bit of idea so this is the only struggle in this field that you know through your own experience see it looks like that you are trying to find your path so self evaluation is uh, not useful here self evaluation is for seekers those who are already on a path and they want to find out how they are progressing so you f- you go to the pathfinder i'll give you the link for that self evaluation all also gives you a rough uh, estimate of uh, the path but the self evaluation will not tell you which path you should take for that we have pathfinder it is somewhat similar but not that detailed it will give you a rough idea of which path can be suitable for you and like you said i cannot decide which path is suitable so there are two options now for many people this will be the case even sometimes path finder will say that no path can be found for you because the person clicked on a totally you know variety of options nothing specific was found so the this tool will also sometimes that uh, there is no path for you sometimes it will tell you wrong path because the person without thinking they click the option so if this is the case that i don't know what is my path which guru should i join then there are two options either wait wait for some time for the inspiration to come wait for 3 months 6 months sometimes one year but if you don't want to wait take the path which is most attractive for you go to a guru which is reachable and uh, start learning something without commitment start learning on that path let us say you want the meditation attracts you so go to the nearest meditation guru and learn it because you know all the paths have some kind of meditation in them some kind of practice slowly you will see that you will get more clarity on this if you think that this is not making me progress it is just a waste of time then you can cross out that that, that thing so elimination go on removing everything which is not suitable for you and finally you will get something in which you can progress so it can happen that initially you may not find any path it can happen it happens to many people and then they do this kind of shopping of paths let us try this let us try that so which should you try first the most attractive the, the practices or the gurus or or the teachings because you won't be able to actually know whether they are true or not but the only thing is you will be able to judge by how much you like it 
<laughs> because there is no experience in the field the judgment can be wrong but that is not a problem for a newcomer at least you will know what happens in this path and at least you will know whether this is suitable for me or not sometimes it takes only 2 3 days you go to that guru and the guru tells you that look we need 2 lakh rupees then you need to stay in himalayas and then you uh, immediately you know i don't know some people will like it but immediately you can see no it's, it's not my thing to do uh, so like this you can shortlist by your own experience some people think that somebody will tell me which is the best path and then i'll go there and then it's all success from that no it is not like this everybody needs to find their own path sometimes it will take some struggle sometimes you will need to go here and there but a real seeker is the one who never gives up so that is all i can say these tools and uh, these tools and these videos and all they are you see limited use there is there, they are of limited use but they will be a starting point for you i wish there was a formula that you put something in the formula and it gives the path like physics mathematics i mean it's not like this mostly the real struggle happens while finding the path once you find it there is hardly any struggle how will you know this is my real path there will be happiness enjoyment there will be progress it will it will be like coming back to home these are the indicators Amrish is saying, "I know all spirituality, and it creating revolution inside me. But I have fear of expression in society, cause I don't want to let them see my change." Well, if you know all spirituality, the society is totally unimportant now, isn't it? <laughs> is there any need to express anything in society? Is it beneficial for you, or simply expressing is beneficial for anybody else in the society? No. If you don't want to reveal what you are to others there is no need to express also so what are you afraid of if it is not needed you don't need to do it then there is no fear is somebody forcing you to express in the society then that is a bigger problem than society yeah he is saying can you clarify what exactly is enlightenment how does surrender fit with that can you kindly provide nuanced answer according to your personal experience and knowledge see the answer is very simple knowing what you are is enlightenment once you know who you are it is impossible to forget it there is no going back is it mechanical non mechanical it is not mechanical and it is not non mechanical simply knowing what is surrender 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 is simply to accept the truth and live in the truth see how easy it is the thing is there is a lot of literature available on what is enlightenment how it happens what happens what is the process mechanical process biological process isn't it there is lot of this kind of uh, entertaining literature i am not saying it is useless it is useful only after the enlightenment has happened only after the realization of the truth has happened there is only one truth which is me i am the only truth so know yourself my suggestion to yaya is know yourself first then all these words will become meaningless it is only entertainment then who said what about enlightenment who is progressing because there is no progress it is you are the ultimate so where will you progress so that's why i said it is necessary to know first as soon as you get the opportunity to know yourself do it first i am not saying accept it blindly you need to uh, go through the process of verification you need to evaluate the evidence that is presented once the evidence is found correct then there is no need to do anything else then everything becomes entertainment even these words the surrender and all they mean nothing really because where are you going to surrender <laughs> so in one line my answer is don't read about it don't don't think about what he said or she said get it for example if you are hungry if you read about food if you watch the videos about food cooking shows you are going to remain hungry the best thing is to eat the food so my suggestion is simply go get the enlightenment first kumar nandra singh sorry if i may not be able to explain my issue fully but whenever i follow path of knowledge and try to achieve higher level my mental status 
I feel a lot of obstacles and sometimes I feel that external powers or environment is trying to stop me. Most of the time start getting health and family related issues. This is very common actually and we we have a technical word for this. It is called resistance. The mind presents resistance because there are still some impurities there. So they, they this resistance or impurities can manifest in many forms. health issues family issues emotional issues financial issues and mostly it will be mental something i don't like this person i don't like this guru i don't like this path of no like this so what to do purification isn't it purification you cannot take up the path of knowledge and uh, now hope for the knowledge here it, it should not be done because the resistance will increase if you force it so purification and which is the best path for purification i think it is the yogic path the ashtang yoga means up to the dhyan stage it is totally focused on purification from the body itself you know starts so you take up any path which makes your body and mind ready for path of knowledge for any kind of knowledge actually So just like I said how will you know this is the right path for me there will be no resistance there will be no obstacle it will be like a piece of cake so path of knowledge is not for you this is very very clear from the events that are happening now i i am suggesting purification spend at least 3 or 4 years in purification then come back i am not saying give up the path of knowledge is hopeless no come back again see what happens purification you cannot do it yourself you will need a guru for that this is my session think about this vipin is saying i am not able to send you direct messages for some time normally it feels very connected by expressing gratitude <laughs> very good that is the sign from the universe that your stage of sending direct messages is over now you need to connect at a higher level now instead of direct message you do a direct connect connect directly and the guru is not this guru who is in the body who is speaking here who is responding to your telegram message that is not the guru that is a medium instrument ai biological intelligence bi we have ai why don't we have bi and ci so you connect to the guru field directly now and if you don't feel connected to the guru field wait <laughs> for the right time be in surrender any kind of dependency is discouraged i'm saying it half joking way because you see the seeker is not dependent on messaging anybody there should be a sense of fulfillment joy bliss are you not one you see remember this thing there is no chance of connection also because it is all one that will make the condition of the mind a little bit relaxed anand this thing how can i know my ignorance no you cannot you cannot even some people think that i have a lot of questions there must be a lot of ignorance no only a guru can know where is the ignorance a guru can like uh, it is like self surgery can you do surgery on yourself probably you can find out what is wrong with the body but so ultimately you require a guru so there is your ignorance isn't it that you think that i can know my ignorance without a guru there is your ignorance normally we say there are three kinds of ignorance the fundamental ignorance is of three kinds first is not knowing who you are second is thinking that the world is real and the third is duality thinking that there are two ignorance of oneness if you do not know these three things you can say that i have this ignorance if you are certain that i know these three things which i told diagnosis then you don't have any ignorance very simple but still since you have a question that shows that you have ignorance what is the exact nature of your ignorance you will come to know when you sit with your guru so if your goal is to get rid of ignorance your goal should be path that is the path of knowledge and your your uh, action should be approaching the guru is simple isn't it it is like the patient asking to somebody i am not feeling well i how can i know which disease i am suffering from from and anybody will say go to the doctor how can you know and even if you can know can you treat it and even if you know it by reading the websites and all these things uh, is it uh, 
believable? Is it reliable to diagnose yourself from unreliable sources? It is common sense. I am not giving you any big formula here. Okay, Lela is saying, for the past month, I have been feeling less connection, attachments to family, friends. I am still performing my duties as before. But now there is no feelings behind my actions. It seems strange, not sure what to make of it. Just like there was a phase when you had all kinds of feelings and emotions and you were doing all kinds of work. Now this is a phase where there are no, not many feelings, not many attachment, nothing. And just like that went away, this will also be. Is impermanence strange? The ignorance is that why is everything not the same? Why should it remain same? Tell me. The thing is, what whatever you are feeling and doing or not feeling or not doing, that will also go away. I mean, my suggestion for Lela is simply remain aware, simply become a witness of whatever is happening. Madhuri is saying for a seeker who is not an any spiritual path, it is difficult to unlearn what he or she had accumulated in the name of knowledge, especially when it contradicts with what one has learned in the name of science. But he or she knows that there is something seeking in life but not satisfied with all degrees. Why there is so much darkness and delusion for true path, knowledge and finding one's guru in life? Is this also predecided when one will have guru in life and will find one's path? So I'll answer from the bottom. Is it predecided? We cannot give you any evidence for that, but it looks like this is true. When the time is right, uh, that person will get the knowledge, that person will get the guru and the path. Before that time, nothing can be done. Now, where is the evidence for that? Your own experience is evidence. It's not written like a formula somewhere. It is generally seen like this. There can be exceptions in some cases. And uh, when it is like this, for many cases, we say, yes, it is predecided. So that is one way to satisfy your intellect. That we don't know how it happens, there is no rule for this, so we say it is predecided somehow. So why is there so much darkness and delusion? Actually, the universe has equal amount of both. Probably you are in the corner of that uh, universe where there is more of darkness and delusion. There are other corners where there is more of light and knowledge and awareness. They don't need any guru. <laughs> like a rich person does not need uh, donation or help. So most of the gurus are here in the dark part where they are needed. So if there is darkness and delusion, there are gurus to remove it. The meaning of the guru is word guru, remover of darkness. So do not ask why, because that is not correct. There is equal amount of everything in the existence. The duality is balanced. Remember the law of duality of mind and the law of balance and the law of pendulum also that it oscillates between light and dark. So how can you make this statement? How can there be reason? And isn't it, isn't it actually predecided that the periods of darkness are followed by period of light? One part is dark, the other part is light. It is always like this. So it is already predecided. That which is in darkness will come in light. That which is in light will go in darkness. This is the game. This is the play. Night and day. Without this kind of play, without this kind of duality, it is all nothingness. It is all emptiness, pure emptiness with potential. So it appears like this. There, there, nobody is in darkness actually. There is no guru, there is no student. Whatever appears, already predecided, it will appear like this because of the laws of the mind. Bipin is saying, but guru is always required. Yes, yes, guru is always required. The method of being with the guru needs to be refined. It is not required that you remain at the same stage all for whole of your life. Pallav is saying, is life predestined or can work manifest situations? Yes, yes. It does not matter what is predestined, what is not. If you have this power to do something, to do something good for yourself and others, do it. Because everything is predetermined, this concept is not going to run your life. It is not useful in your life. It is useful in philosophy, you see. If you want to study the illusion in the tantra and sciences, 
<laughs> for these people these things are you can say useful as well as entertaining what is useful in your life what can you do today can you do something according to your desire can you bring a change with your actions yes do it manvendra is saying i feel that there are some impurities and as you said the resistance is increasing but i am not able to figure out where and what i am doing wrong or what did wrong in past also kindly guide me how to find guru to read of my all my impurities just like i said if you could diagnose everything if you could find out everything by yourself you would call yourself a guru not a student you are not even a student right now because you don't have a guru so why are you asking how can i find out how can i figure out you cannot otherwise i would have told you the techniques of finding what is wrong with me only a doctor can diagnose the patient only a guru can find out what is wrong in you if anything at all sometimes it is just imagination you see nothing is wrong mostly so how can i guide you to find a guru if impurities are the problem the right path is the one that clears the impurity and the best safest is the yogic path ashtanga yoga now go to any guru who is near to you and teaches this kind of purification because you see it is a path of discipline eat this don't eat this sit like this don't sit like this think like this stop thinking like this it is like this discipline and that guru will slowly find out what is the issue in you so i have given you a suggestion act on it any guru will do because you need to start somewhere you need to start somewhere start at a safe place which is near to your house because these practices they cannot be done online you see do not find a guru somewhere in himalayas rishikesh or bali indonesia no they are not practical you see personally go to that guru and do not describe your problem let the guru find out the problem because if you go with the problem the guru can give you something else instead of practice just tell him that i want to learn these things i want to progress spiritually then let us see what happens how to find the guru because you already know the path it will be easy anybody who teaches this kind of practices is your guru the only thing is you should like that person and he should not charge you too much these are practical things he should have some kind of experience so find out ask around go go and visit these people talk to their students ask what happens in your ashram so on this is my guidance pallav is saying i am stuck with concept of how is one fulfilled in itself that is i experience awareness but not fulfillness of it and there is no such thing as fulfillment of it at least in our system knowing what you are is being whole and complete there is no technique to become whole and complete and there is no technique to experience it so my uh, suggestion is to continue purpose of being aware is not to experience some kind of fulfillment so probably you are using a wrong tool to do a dif- uh, different kind of task find out why there is, what is the purpose of the awareness practice which is told in our program do the awareness practice see what it does and then uh, worry about why nothing is fulfilled i don't know what is the meaning of fulfillment you are whole and complete this much knowledge should be enough i think if you are trying to achieve something that means the knowledge has not happened and then nothing will happen no achievement will happen if something is incomplete not fulfilled you can try something you can try to do something to make it complete but if you are already whole and complete what can you try so the truth is you are already whole and complete now try to verify this instead of uh, using this practice or that practice to enforce your beliefs get rid of the belief kanika is saying as you said one has to connect on higher levels there are many things are happening on higher levels many happen in awareness and many happening without awareness could you please explain how to pick up right sign right sign is the one which happens in response to your prayer a response to your demand to fulfill the desire this can happen while you are aware this can happen while you are not aware this no requirement of awareness here only recognize so the right sign is very clear crystal clear it leaves no doubt 
if there is doubt that means something is wrong it is not the right sign and there is some emotional angle there that you feel nice you feel happy you will feel that uh, everything is right i am on the right track so again today itself i posted that video on the hindi channel you can see it if it is cloudy if it is doubtful if it is so ambiguous you cannot decide whether it was a sign or coincidence or what then that is not the right sign do not take any action on it with uh, more experience you will start knowing so continue the practice when i said connected the higher level how will you know i am connected so probably that is why she is asking what is the right sign <laughs> that i am connected you won't feel any kind of uh, fear anxiety you will not remain unsure that i am not connected to the guru guru field anything universe whatever you want to call it, it's all one it is all me connect to yourself so if there are doubts if there are fears that i am left alone here somewhere in the corner <laughs> my guru left me that means you are not connected that is the sign that no connection what is the sign of connection right sign all these fears and doubts anxiety they, they will disappear so you message me i don't answer anxiety isn't it guru left me finally <laughs> i need to find another guru no connection here isn't it no connection that is why i said this messaging is temporary isn't it everything is temporary <laughs> everything is impermanent whatever connections you will make in the mind they are more stable they last longer beyond your death beyond your birth that will be the connection have you done something to establish that connection don't think of establish the connection with the instrument the instrument is also impermanent even if you are connected with the instrument 24 by 7 through internet hotline it is momentary it's going away get something which is permanent wifi higher and that will also go away because nothing remains isn't it so ultimately who remains you not the guru the guru is your form are you trying to connect with your own form so think about this but deep is saying lighter side take red pill or blue pill like matrix from your guru very good yes if you come here you will get two red pills sometimes three high dose isn't it the funny thing is i'll give you the blue also later on if you have the ability <laughs> we not only pull you out of the matrix we teach you to create your own this is extraordinary this this is not happening anywhere in the world which is happening here so here we are going to end today's meeting hopefully every uh, all the questions were answered and uh, i'll see you next sunday thank you everybody for attending today's meeting